name to invoke the blood of Jesus and to take dominion for your word declares that creation is waiting for the sons of men to rise up it is our time to arise in Jesus mighty name in the precious name of Jesus we pray amen 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 hallelujah 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 somebody just declare i've got the victory we are victorious in his sight we are victorious in the spiritual places we are victorious and so shall it be here on earth amen 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 hallelujah you guys may take your seats good morning to each and every one of you guys happy easter Sunday morning to each and every one of you guys and to those of you watching from around the globe. We salute you guys. We thank you guys for joining us on today. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be in the house today to commemorate what our Savior Jesus has done and more so to remember the power that we have walking in his name. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. My name is Prince Armani. Son of the Most High God, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And these are your morning announcements. Hallelujah. Are there any visitors in the house today? We want to acknowledge you guys. Any visitors, would you please just raise your hand? We want to make you feel welcome here at Global Fellowship Church. Hallelujah. Can we just give her a round of applause? Make them feel welcome here. Amen. You guys are welcome. You are most welcome here at Global Fellowship Church. Amen. If you did not have the opportunity to fill out a visitor's card in the front, our ushers will come around right now to give you one. We'd love to keep you informed with the different events that are taking place here at GFC. Our service times are Sundays at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., Wednesdays at 5 p.m., I'm sorry, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and the last Friday of every month we have Miracle Night. Amen. With this most recent Miracle Night this past Friday, what a mighty way to start off the weekend. What a mighty way to start off Resurrection Weekend with a miracle night. Very powerful it was, and I hope that you guys were blessed by attending that event. We'd like to let you guys know that the School of the Spirit 101 and 201 will be taking place. The school calendar starts next week, April 6th through May 11th. How many of you guys have registered? How many of you guys have registered for this event? If you guys are ready to grow, if you guys are ready to develop your spiritual understanding, this is an opportunity for you guys to join this curriculum. It's a six-week discipleship program. If you haven't registered yet, please do so today. The full cost is $200. And for those of you who are partners and tithers, the cost will be reduced to $175. Amen? The program will end with a formal graduation just as it did last year. Also, those of you who are interested in the music department, if you have any musical abilities, if you know how to play the piano, the drums, or you want to develop in that area, we ask you guys to reach out to Marcos or the admin team as we are looking to expand our team. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And finally, let me just go ahead and call Prophet Joseph up to the pulpit. We are going to move forward with our baby dedication. Can we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus today? It is such an honor from the Lord to, to do the baby dedications. And those of you that have babies that have never been dedicated, it's very important that your children and your grandchildren should be dedicated to the Lord. What happens when you dedicate a child to the Lord is they are completely sealed. They belong to Jesus. If you are a parent, say a better amen. amen. You may not understand the importance of dedicating a child, but in the spirit, that child belongs to Jesus all the days of their lives. No matter what happens when they are in high school, they have already been dedicated to the Lord. So, if you have not 
dedicated your children to the Lord. Dr. Akum, our wonderful pastor over the children's ministry, the, the next generation ministry, speak to him afterwards so we can consecrate your children and also we declare good health over our children. The children we dedicate to the Lord, we declare good health for them. Because one of the ways the devil is going to continue harassing you is by making your child sick. Now, as a loving father, whenever my son is having a fever, the, the other one, the old one, it's, it's okay, you know, she's, 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 uh, she's big. But when the small one is having a fever, I don't sleep. I don't sleep. Now imagine if your child has been sick for a week. It means the whole week I can't sleep, I can't eat. Do you see how the devil is going to try to mess up your life by messing up your children? So I pray that you will understand how important it is to dedicate your child. Amen? So this morning we have one child who is going to be dedicated and I'll, I'll have Dr. Good morning, GFC. Yes, when we have a baby born, you know, we are so excited. We are so happy. We give thanks to God because we have a new member in GFC. Amen. And this morning, we are, I'm so honored to call upon Getty Player. And the mother name is Makia Player. So we'll just come over here and we'll pray for the baby. And it's not only for the baby, if you have a child, like up to 12 years, like Prophet said, if you're not been dedicated yet, you can come and contact me. Today we dedicate this baby to the Lord, that all the days of her life, she will live a consecrated life for Jesus. That she will never serve any other God except the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That as long as she lives, her body from today becomes the host and the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That she will never be addicted to substance. Amen. But the Holy Spirit would give her the deep burning desire for the Lord Jesus all the days of her life. And when she's old enough, she will serve God. Amen. She will preach the gospel. Amen. By the laying on of hands, we seal her from sickness. Amen. We seal her from disease. Amen. We declare that any curse that runs from generation to generation cannot come to her. Yes. We now invoke the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yes. through Jesus. Yes. That she will live a blessed life. Amen. And for her sake, the mother, the, 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 the grandmother and the great-grandmother are going to be recipients of the blessings of the Lord. Jesus. We now dedicate this baby and we declare the baby belongs to the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name and the people say, Amen. Amen. several weeks we the, the Lord had spoken to me to amplify the outreach program to go into our communities to win our family and our friends and to bring them to Jesus because if you understand there is a need for people to come to Jesus I was reading a, an article this past week that says that America has lost its religion or its commitment to Christianity. That Christianity is at the lowest it has ever been since this nation was founded. You know what that tells you and I? That we need to stand and we need to bring the lost into the church. So, we started what is called 
each one, bring one, everyone in the church, online, you have to answer the call and start bringing people to Jesus. And so this is, watch this video, it, it tells us what our goal and what our vision for the next several months we are going to practice this. We are going to burn with our, our hearts to bring in the lost. So watch this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new 2024 Global Fellowship Church Vision. Bring in 500 souls to get saved, delivered, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Spirit to walk in the divine victory of Jesus Christ. Global Fellowship isn't just a church. It is a family of sons of God born not with the will of man but with an incorruptible seed of the holy spirit we are a spiritual community empowered by the holy spirit to influence our communities with the resurrection power of jesus christ mark 16 15 and jesus said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature god has strategically planted you in various areas so you can reach people with the gospel of jesus christ your family your siblings, your neighbors, your co-workers, and everyday strangers are souls that God brings to you for eternal life. In order to fulfill our assignment of 500 souls by June, every Global Fellowship Church member has an assignment. Bring one soul to every service. Every one bring one. Every man. Every woman. Every child. This is a divine call for the end-time soul harvest to empty hell and populate heaven. Matthew 9, 37, 38. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now more than ever the Lord needs you to win souls and bring them into his kingdom. Now, answer the call to enter the harvest field and win souls for the Lord Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen. Amen. There, there are people we would like to recognize that have gone far and beyond to bring their family and their friends. So if you are here this morning and your name is called, I would like you to come up here. We have a gift for you just to recognize your efforts in bringing your family and your friends and if you your name is not called, it means you need to work harder. Now, how many of you know that in heaven we are going to receive rewards based on what we do here on earth? All right, now that amen is full of jealous right there. I haven't even called the names. You are giving me attitudes. <laughs> we, we are going to be rewarded in heaven based on what we do. This is the reason those of us that understand we work extra hard. Because in heaven, we will be rewarded. Amen? So we do have a couple gifts that um, the people that have been working hard over the past almost six weeks uh, and beyond. Um, so Jamie, if you are here, please. Uh, Jamie, can you come? Can we clap our hands for Jamie? It's Jaime. I'm sorry? Jaime. Oh, that's Jaime. How can that? It's J-A. That's Jaime. It's Mexican, brother. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I, I should have practiced that. Amen. Why don't you call the rest of them so, so that I don't, have, I don't have to butcher anybody's name? <laughs> Jason, if you're here. Jason, we have also Gloria Shepherd. Yes. Ma, I want to I brag on Mother Gloria. Mother Gloria, come up here, please. Come on. Clap your hands for Mother Gloria. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Now, first of all, Mother Gloria, can I brag on your age? Yeah, please, tell, tell the people how young you are. 77. Now, Mother Gloria recently made Global Fellowship Church a home church. 
Mother Gloria has how many years in ministry have you served God? You speak in the mic. Since yes. I was 21 years old. Since she was, tw so she has a lot. A lot of years. That's over 50 years of her serving God, and she just was led here by the Holy Spirit Bakase, to become one of us. Can we just appreciate the Lord for Mother Gloria? I, I'm telling you, Mother Gloria blesses me every time I see her. And today we wanted just to recognize, appreciate for everything that she has been doing. Now, Mother Gloria received her own appreciation gift, I think, a little uh, last week or something like that. Uh, if not, then we will, we, will, we will do that. But I just wanted to bring Mother Gloria up so that I can show off. And she looks really good. <laughs> amen and amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Mother Gloria. I like gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Mother Gloria. One more time, Mother Gloria, please. Claire. Claire, yes. we have a gift for you. Yes, Claire. Please come forward. Can we clap our hands for Miss Claria, please? Tabrisha. Tabrisha. Cheryl. Clap our hands for Tabrisha, please. And Cheryl. All right. If you don't get your gift, I will go spend it myself. All right. Hannah, please come forward. Chelsea. Chelsea Woods. Okay, these are not here today. All right. I, I wanted us to just acknowledge the people. There's a lot of you guys that have been bringing your family and your friends. But this morning, we just wanted to acknowledge a few, and then we will do that in the evening. And, and then we are going to be uh, recognizing people Every, at the end of every month, we will recognize those who are making an effort and making an impact in their community. And the people say, amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Amani. Somebody clap your hands and just appreciate <laughs> the work that Amani is doing. Amen. Wasn't that a wonderful miracle, a miracle night that we had on, on Friday? That service was incredible. Amen. But by the way, Aaron, Aaron has a testimony. Aaron, do you want to join me? Grab the mic on the way here. Can we appreciate Aaron as he comes up here? Aaron shared with me this testimony, and I said, I need us to hear the testimony so we can believe God for what God has done in his life. Amen. Look, there we go. There we go. Uh, so, some of you guys know me. My name is Aaron. I've been coming here since 2021, roughly. Uh, I've been serving. Um, this is uh, truly a house of miracles, and uh, I just wanted to give a brief testimony about what happened. Um, I'm 35. I've never owned a home before, and he's always talking about, you know, go for it, you know, get a home, and, uh, you know, the market is pretty crazy right now with the interest rates, and so... Uh, we've been looking for a home for a few months, and we finally found the community we wanted. Um, and we started narrowing down the houses we wanted to get, and unfortunately, things just kept coming up, and it kept getting worse and worse. So um, apparently, I had one collections account for like 100 bucks, like back in 2021 that I had disputed, and I paid, and that's like the only mark on my credit. And when we went to get approval for the home, uh, they said, well, you know, this drops you down 97 points. And I said, how is that possible? You know, that's even the people at the lender were like, I've never seen that. Armani, uh, who's here, he's my realtor for the transaction, so he can testify to all this. Um, he, you know, we talked about it, it's just a natural warfare. Um, I ended up getting sick, uh, couldn't hear out of my right ear for like a week. The day before we signed for the home, my stomach was hurting real bad. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital, <laughs> uh, but it went away. And um, they it was on a first-come, first-served basis for the special promotion that they had, which lowered the mortgage payment by a whole lot. And I reached out on Thursday 
to the prophet and I said, hey, can you just pray for me because, you know, these guys are trying to play me and, you know, I, I'm not trying to do that. And um, they only had like three or four left, uh, you know, on Thursday. And when Armani and I talked to the builder, she said, you know, it's first come, first serve. We're selling houses like hotcakes. Um, you know, I can't accept you wanting the house over the phone, so I'm going to have to have you come in. So they set it for 3.30 on Saturday. And this isn't just for their community. It's for 12 communities. So, I mean, we lost a couple of houses before this. So, you know, we were just trying to see what we could get. Well, Friday comes along. Somebody had canceled their appointment before us. So they bumped us to 1.30 on Saturday. And then uh, where it got really crazy was that the whole system crashed, I guess, uh, on um, Saturday morning. And so I'm getting ready to go out to my appointment. And there's two appointments appointments before me and Armani says hey the builder just called their system is down their servers are down and um, they can't process anything so you just have to sit tight I drove out there anyway <laughs> and uh, I was like I'm gonna do it we're gonna go for it when I got there there was a family walking out and uh, I walked in and the builder had told us that the uh, the appointment before me had canceled the family that was walking out had taken the second to the last deal. We were the last ones to get into the community. And that whole credit thing didn't matter because I still qualified <laughs> under that. And I was able to get a home that is like way better than I can imagine. It's kind of sitting up on a hill. It's got closer to half an acre. So we're very excited. So, um, I just wanted to say to all of those people out there that this is truly a house of miracles. I've never been a part of a church where the pastors, Pastor Joseph, Dr. Tando, Pastor Stanley, and all the other pastors, Dr. Akun, they take a genuine interest in you personally. I can call this man. Don't call him. But I'm saying <laughs> I can call this man in, in some dire emergencies, and he will pray for me. And not only do they pray, it comes true because this house is a house of faith and that's all I can say so thank you so much come on can we appreciate the Lord for what he is doing come on put your hands together I want to stand on the prophetic anointing and declare you will testify next I said you will testify next amen the next testimony about a house will be your house Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen and amen. I don't know if we should do the offering now or do it later, but I feel a stirring in my spirit to jump into the word. Is that okay? Can we do that? All right. Second Corinthians, please. First Corinthians, rather. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2 and beginning from verse 1. I want to say to everybody, happy resurrection service. Amen and amen. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 1, and we will read all the way. Th there's going to be a lot of reading, but I would like all of us to read it together as a mighty choir, and I want us to read it all the way to verse number 16. I was planning on making this just one service only but the more i listen to the spirit i do believe that this has to be at least a two-part series meaning that i might finish this later tonight but i'm going to pray that this is going to be a prophetic message more especially for the resurrection service and i know that god wants to resurrect some things in our lives i want to believe god for the resurrection of careers today I want to believe God for resurrection of businesses this morning. I want to believe God for the resurrection of ideas, resurrection of gifts, that whatever has been pronounced and declared dead in your life has to encounter the resurrection power of God. And somebody say amen. I hear the Holy Spirit saying it's going to be the resurrection of your status. Ah, if you were born outside of the United States, you know what that means. The resurrection of your status. Some of you, that case has been pending for years. But this morning, 
God is going to breathe the resurrection power on it. And not only are you getting the green card or permanent residence, but you shall become a citizen. Because it's the resurrection service. And somebody say amen. amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verses 1. And, and please, when we start reading, I want us to read all of us like a mighty choir as loud as we can without breaking momentum. And somebody say amen. amen. All right. I think let's do the, King, the NLT. It is going to be much easier on our tongue. So we avoid thou, thouest. Amen. And thee. So let's do the NLT version. And uh, without breaking momentum, we stay together. Are we all ready to read it together? Now, remember that the word of God is the highest form of prophecy. So by you simply reading the word out loud, you are prophesying the word of God. All right? Are you ready to become a prophet and prophesy the word? All right. On three. One, two, three, go. And impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. Now, before we go any further, tell your neighbor, there is a master plan on my life. All right. I think you told the wrong person. Tell your other neighbor, God has a master plan for my life. Now, before we go any further, that master plan does not include poverty. I think somebody knows what I'm saying over here. The master plan of the Lord for your life does not include poverty. The plan that God has for your life does not include sickness and pain, does not include sorrow and grief. The master plan that God has for you does not include a short life, but a long life. That is the master plan. The master plan that God has for your life is not that you rent somebody's house all the days of your life and raise your children in a rented house. But the master plan that God has for you is that you will one day own your own piece of land. Amen. That at the end of your life, you will pass on wealth to your children to fulfill the plans of the Lord that he declared that the righteous man liveth an inheritance for his children. The master plan that God has for your life is to make you blessed to be a blessing. The master plan that God has for your life does not include you living a cursed life going around the same cycles or circles over and over and over. Now, if you believe God has a master plan, I want you to tell your neighbor, there is a master plan over my life. And I hear in my spirit the Lord saying, this year, that master plan is being deployed over your life. And everyone who knows you, they will see that the plan of the Lord is coming to pass. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. If you believe there's a plan for your life, shout amen. Are you ready for verse 2? Let's go to verse 2. Woo, I feel the anointing already. Let's all of us go together. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. Media team, a little faster. I came to you in weakness, timid, and trembling. And my message and my preaching were with very plan. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would trust not in the human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet when I'm among the mature believers, I speak with the words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that brings to this No, the wisdom we speak of is the mysteries of God. Keep going. Let's do number seven again together as loud as we can. No, the wisdom we speak is the mystery of God.
keep going. But the rulers of this world have not understand it. Now, before we proceed, ask your neighbor, do you see what I see? Now, now, in case they wonder what you see, I see the promised land. All right. I see the promised land. I see the glory of God. I see blessings coming. I see open doors. I see freedom. I see healing. These are the reasons I cannot be depressed. Because even though everything around me seems to be falling apart, but I see things my natural eyes have not seen. I hear things my natural ears have not heard. I have come to understand the things my mind has not understood. Now, one more time, ask your neighbor, do you see what I see? I think people are, people are going to wonder after today, why is it that you are constantly joyful when you don't have what you are prophesying? Because you see what they don't see. You hear what they don't hear. Verse number 10, as loud as we can. So we know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. Now, I want you to notice there that God has given us wonderful things. Say with me, God has given me wonderful things. Now, you understand if you are the, 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 the scholar of the, the, the language of English that given is a past tense. Meaning that everything I want has already been given. I was hoping somebody would understand that very simple. It has already been given. It's, it's already in my possession. It hasn't manifested yet, but it's already in my possession. I already have it. That's why he says, let the weak say, while they are weak, they have already become strong. Let the poor say, let the blind say, it has already been given to us. Verse 13. Using spiritual words to explain spiritual things. When we talk about using spiritual words to explain spiritual things, it's like you explaining what trading is to a three-year-old. They will look at you like you are speaking in Swahili. Now, Swahili is a language spoken... Verse number 14. But people who end spiritual can't receive this truth from God's spirit. So when we tell people that we are blessed, even though we don't have a house, they think we are foolish. Now, just tell your neighbor, I'm not foolish. So over the next 30 minutes, if they hear you shout... If they hear you scream, if they see you clap your hands, it's not because you are foolish, but it's because you understand something that is spiritual. So spiritual things can only be understood by those who are spiritual. This is the reason we clap our hands when we have nothing to clap our hands for or about. 
Nobody is going to understand why. People possibly don't understand why some of you have had to wake up early on a Sunday and drive an hour just to go to church. They don't understand that these are spiritual principles. They don't understand why God commands us to forgive those who have hurt us and they refuse to apologize. We forgive not because we want to, but because it's a spiritual principle. It's a spiritual principle. It's a spiritual principle. Woo. Number 15, please. We're nearly there. Watch this. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. Can I say this? And I'm going to go deeper tonight. Can I say this? That this is why people don't understand you. Look right over there. Look right over there. But they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. Elder Winnie, we become a mystery. You, you can't. People try to analyze you. They don't, they don't understand. People look at you and they say, wait a minute, she was born in Zambia, but how come she has what she has? No, no, no. She, she's, she, she was born in, uh, someone was born in Mexico. I don't want to point someone who, she's from, she's like, I'm from McAllen. <laughs> they, they try to analyze you, but they can't bring you to the place where they understand you. Not only do you believe in mysteries, but you have become a mystery yourself. Come on, come on, Aaron. They, they look at your credit and they say, your credit is not good for you to qualify for the house. But yet God qualified you because they can't evaluate you. You become a mystery. They said you cannot conceive at your age. But yet when God's timing is upon you, he opens your womb. You give birth to a healthy child because you are a mystery. A woman came last week, for, uh, uh, Wednesday, to testify that she has been wanting to be married for so many years. She's nearly 40. And I prophesied and nearly four or five months later, she's getting married. Why? Because we become a mystery. Let me say this before we move on. Don't wait to be understood. Because some people will never understand you. you. You didn't hear that. Never wait for the whole world to understand you because you operate from a different dimension. Do you think I should get married? Do you think I should have a child? Do you think I can get this job? Do you think I should start a business? Some people will never understand you to agree with you. Don't ever wait for those who are not on your level to understand you. You will continue being a mystery as long as you live. Number 16, and then let's get the ball rolling. As loud as we can go. Now we understand why we think differently. Is because we don't have the human mind, but we have the mind of Christ. That's the reason some of us, Pastor Stanley, are able to give up what others fail to give up because we have a mind of Christ. That's the reason some of us are able to believe God for ridiculous, impossible things because we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Jesus looked at the cross and he says, yes, I am going to die on the cross, but I've also understood that on a Sunday morning, I will come out of that grave. I want to speak from a subject I have entitled this morning, God's Master Plan. 
One more time, tell your neighbor, God has a master plan for my life. Now, let's begin all over again from verse number one of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter one, chapter two, and verses one. And Paul begins by saying, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty, impressive wisdom to tell you God's plans. And, and today being the resurrection service, I understand that many people from around the world are going into churches to go and attend history classes. Listen. Many people today from around the world are going to church to attend history classes. History classes. They are going to be told how Jesus was crucified. They are going to be told how Jesus was buried. They are going to be told how Jesus was resurrected. And then they will say, go home and see you next week. But understand that the resurrection is not about the history. The, the resurrection has everything to do with encountering the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We, we are not anointed by God to become history lectures. We are not supposed to come here and give you theology. We are anointed by God to come and reveal the mystery power of God in your life. This is what this is all about. Not coming together to hear about a Jesus who died and was buried and was resurrected. But we are supposed to come together to unfold the mystery of Jesus' death on the cross. That the death on the cross was about setting you free from the powers of hell and death and curse that was holding you captive in your previous life, that now that you have believed in the power of God, then you are also going to encounter the power of the resurrection so that you can go home a free person. I, I want to talk to those of you that have encountered the power of the resurrection. That, that, that we have not just been baptized in the death, but we have also become partakers of the resurrection power. The Bible says if God raised Jesus from the dead, then not only is he going to raise Jesus, but he's also going to raise you up. To raise you up. That simply means that you cannot come to a church like this and go back home the same. You, you cannot. Because the resurrection power is at work in this place. And can I declare this by faith that there is going to be such a strong move of God before the service is over that everyone is going to encounter the resurrection power of God. So Paul says, I did not come to you guys with lusty and impressive words. It's amazing how people choose churches by how eloquent the pastors preach. We explain the Greek and the, and the Hebrew words and yet people are still bound to addictions and bound to depression and anxiety. That the mother's curses and the witchcraft from Zimbabwe and Lagos and Lusaka and Mexico and the witchcraft from Louisiana is still working on your life. But Paul says, I did not come with an impressive language, but I came with a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit because if your life is going to be transformed from one level to another level you are going to encounter the power that raised Jesus from the dead and that is what God's plan for your life is come on guys 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 I never came with lofty impressive words. In other words, I was not sent to impress you with how well I speak. That's the reason if you are in this church analyzing how I pronounce words, you will never be transformed. Because Jesus was not an Englishman. I'm sorry. 
He, 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 Jesus wasn't Jesus, and the Lord says, I'm not sent to do that. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even know if I say God. Did he say God or he said God? <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is the manifestation of the power of God. Amen. That is what matters. So, so I'm not here to impress you with how eloquent I speak, but I'm here to declare that when I say the name Jesus, that there are demons from hell that have to leave your life and never come back. I don't know if you need to hear this. That when we come together and we pray for you, that there are demons that were attached to your child, who has been harassing your child, that when I call on that name, the demons have to go because of the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work on my life and not how well I speak. Because how well we speak will impress those who are carnal. And those who are carnal cannot be transformed. But many of us have come from different backgrounds because we are drawn by the power and not by the impressive speeches. Look at this too. Look at this too. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus. Now, if, if you read that and you don't understand the background and the history of Paul, you would think he can say that lightly. But understand that Paul was a master theologian. That, that Paul had started theology and he started the, the, the laws of Moses and the prophets. And every time... Paul stood in front of people. He would explain the words of Moses, but that explanation did nothing for the people that heard it. So Paul said, the next time I came to you, I decided to forget about all of that. I didn't want to use my own theology. I didn't want to use all that religion had to offer me because religion will bring everything to absolutely nothing. And I do believe that there are some of you that are sick and tired of religion. And I think that's the reason the church in America has lost interest in church because they have gone to church for many years and yet church has not done anything for them. They gave their tithe, they prayed, they sang songs, they slapped their neighbor, they turned around and nothing worked because religion will not work but only bring you to the place of frustration. I am so glad that Global Fellowship is not a religious organization organization but we are a spiritual entity we are the iglesia the called out one the chosen one the ones who are walking by the power of the holy spirit so we refuse to be acknowledged as a religious entity but a group of people that are born out of the spirit of god This is the only way we are going to bring eternal transformation in people is when we do away with religion. We do away with religion. I do believe I'm looking at people that are hungry for something much more than just a song, Sister Gertrude. People are not just looking to sing a song and hear the history how David killed Goliath when they have their own Goliath in their life. But people are saying, if God truly killed Goliath, what happens to this Goliath? have been facing this giant for so many years. But I hear in my spirit, God says, I'm releasing the same power that came upon Jesus on your life. That you can also slay your own giant. That that thing that's been holding you from, your, from the master plan of God, that you can kill it out of your life. You can break it out of your life. Those of you that are saying, I'm sick and tired of dealing with the same things. God says, I'm giving you power so that you can walk into the master plan of God. <laughs> tell your neighbor, forget the past. Come on, I want you to tell them like you're talking to your child. Forget the past. There are, there are many of us that are trying to use the past as fuel to encourage us right now. But understand, God says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. 
Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Sometimes it's good for you to remember the past, but sometimes you become so attached to the past that you are not able to see what God is doing in your life. Sometimes it's good for you to completely say, I don't want to do anything with my past. Wow, it lasted, but God is doing something new in my life. I give God permission. God, break every attachment to my past, every addiction to my past, break it all God I want to believe you for something new something my eyes have not seen something my mind has never heard has never known something my ears has never understood God do something new in my life the, the question I have is do you believe that God is doing something new in your life this is the reason those of us have been able to come out of where we came from because we believed God for something that we have never seen before I think I'm preaching better than you're responding today. God is doing, tell your neighbor, God is doing something new in my life. So Paul says, I forgot all about my past and everything I went through in my past. I forgot about all of that, but all I want to know is Christ and Christ, the one who was crucified. So my whole interest now is about the death on the cross and what happened to me. While he was on the cross, that is all that I preached among you is what happened to Christ on the cross and what that means for me. To, 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 to many people, I was talking to someone yesterday and, and I said, the, the problem with a lot of us, more especially, I know that uh, uh, Europe and Africa and South America were exposed to a lot of Catholicism. And, and you understand something very hard to break is going to be religion such as Catholicism. Where many people grew up praying with a rosary on their cross. They, they have that green plastic uh, cross where they pray to Hail Mary, Mother of Grace. You, you understand that, that, that to, to them, the cross is about that and nothing else. But what you understand is that something much more transpired on the cross. The Bible says he made a, a public spectacle. He demonstrated that the devil was nothing but just a loser who, who he disarmed on the cross publicly. While Jesus was ashamed publicly, he was trading my shame for his glory. He said, I am going to be lifted on the cross and I'm going to put on your shame. T tell your neighbor, no more shame. I, I was hoping somebody would speak that prophetically because there are some of us, we are the subject of shame in our family. Your sisters and younger brothers are married and they are living a happy life and there you are as an older sister, as an older brother, you are not married yet, you, 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 you are not settled yet and the shame that is coming in your home. But I want you to understand that on the cross, Jesus says, I do not want you to live another day in a shame shame. I do not want you to get married in a shame. I do not want you to raise children in a shame. So wow, the whole world thinks you are going to die in shame. I will break every shame off of your life and give you glory for your shame. <laughs> Dr. Tando, what I'm going to say may not get a lot of applauses and amens from Africans, but as an African, I think I qualify to say this. There is some kind of shame that we fail to shake off of us because of our background. But I believe God is going to break every shame that is associated with where you come from. I was hoping the amens would be louder right about now. But I want you to understand that there is some kind of shame because of where we come from. They call it the dark continent. They call it the dark continent. They, they say Africans are the, are the sons of, of Sham, who was the son of, of Noah, that God that he cursed. Now, you understand that I'm not the son of a cursed son. I know you and your mama, you believe you are cursed, but I want you to know that on the cross, that is a lie. Whatever curse that was operating on your life, that curse was brought... Tell your neighbor, I'm not cursed, but I'm blessed. <laughs> Dr. Tando, I went to Canada, I think about six years ago. 
And I could tell that every community I, wo- I drove through was different. They drove me through a Chinatown. I was surprised Canadians have a Chinatown. And I could see all their stalls were in Chinese, the grocery stalls in Chinese. But what impressed me was the cars in the parking lot. Oh, the Chinese immigrants, they were driving two-door convertibles. They were driving Mercedes-Benz. They were driving all kind of cars. And then their houses were flamboyant and they were nice. And then they drove me through the Indian section. All their houses were delicious. All their beautiful stores. And, uh, and then they drove me to a place I knew I was in the motherland. I don't know why Latinos are laughing. I'm coming for you. (laughs) Dr. Tando, I knew Simba was going to come out of somewhere. (laughs) Because I could tell by the vehicles in the parking lot that there was a car with five different colors. The the fender was different from the bumper. The bumper was different. Some of them, the windows were duct taped and I began to say, God, something is wrong here. Something is wrong. How can people come out of one country and then be flown across the world and the curse that was operating in their mother's backyard finds them where they go and God says, I want to break their psychosis. I want to break the curse in the mind. I want to destroy that spirit that operates in their mind. The spirit that tells you because you are from Zimbabwe, you can't compete with somebody from Chicago. I want to break that thing out of you. I I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't know who needs to hear this. But God sent me today. It's the resurrection service. God is going in the deep down in your subconscious. And God is saying to you, the curse in the place you were brought up cannot affect your life. Because there's a glory that came out of the cross. I don't know who needs to hear this, but God says I'm looking for a people that understand I am not what my mother went through. I am not what my father went through. My mother's pain cannot be my pain. My mother's shame cannot be my shame. Because he died on the cross, I am set free from their curse. Tell your neighbor, no more shame. No, you didn't say that right. You didn't say that right. I don't know how many of you are tired of living paycheck to paycheck when the wicked are thriving. They are driving fancy cars and flying private. They are buying all the Louis you can think about. And what do we do? We are living on a budget to budget. Don't you know that while he was hanging on the cross, that the spirit of God was setting you free from every poverty that was working? In your life. And what the devil wants you to do is to make you feel inferior. That because I was born in Lusaka, then somebody else who was born in another place is better than I am. But I want you to understand that there are some things that God is waiting for you to just change your mind. That God just wants you to say, yes, I know where I'm from. I know the issues that run in my father's house. But God says, I am not one of them. I am not one of the victims of the demons of my mother's spirit. The witchcraft that has been working in my father's bloodline. I am not going to be one of the victims because I understand the power of the resurrection that came into the tomb on that Sunday morning and it broke the curse of death. Just prophesy, tell your neighbor, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. The witches cannot curse me and the curse cannot stick because I'm not one of them. The the spirit of poverty cannot stick in my life because I'm not one of them. I understand the master plan of God over my life. I know I was born broke. I've lived broke. But the secret is I'll never die broke. 
I think I'm preaching to the wrong people today. But God wants to raise a generation of people that are saying, yes, my beginning was very humble and small and painful and sorrowful. But yet a time is coming. God will show me that there is a plan at work over my life. That there is a call of God to come out of absolutely everything. This is the reason some of us refuse to die where everybody dies. Because we know we have much more to live for. If you think this is the best you have seen in my life, oh, I want you to sit there and enjoy the show. This is going to become even more glorious. There's a lot more coming to my life. Those of you that have a car, everybody thinks that's the best car you ever have. Brother, you have nothing coming. There's a lot more coming in my life. Paul says, Paul says, I forgot all about the past. And all I wanted to do is serve Jesus and him being crucified. Tell your neighbor, he paid my price. He paid my price. The question is, do you believe that Jesus paid your price? This is the reason, this is the reason I don't have to do as much as my father did. Let, let me speak in a layman's words. I don't have to wake like my father worked. Oh, oh, I need somebody to hear. Be because there are some of us who believe that the second job and the third job is going to solve your problems. But the reason the first one cannot solve it is because it's a spirit. If it's a spirit that's been holding you back, you can have nine jobs and that will still not be enough. But what I hear God saying is because of Jesus... Everything that your father suffered cannot be transferred over to you because the curse that held him from living a fulfilled life has to break out of your life. And the Bible says, whomsoever the son of God sets free is free indeed. And I hear God says, forget what you have gone through in your life. Forget what you tried and never worked in your life. Forget what failed in your life. Forget the business you invested in and never worked in your life. God says, now you have come into the prime of your life. Now you have come into the season of your life. And God chose 2024 to be the year when he will cause the glory to manifest beginning today. Tell your neighbor, it's a master plan, it's a master plan, it's a master plan, it's a master plan. So I don't have to have a cross on my neck to know. I don't have to, I don't have to. It's not about having a cross on my neck. But it's about knowing. Come on, tell somebody I know. I don't like the way you guys said it. Because some of you are going to know that you finally have breakthrough when you're looking at your check. But God says, I want you to know while you're looking at the bill. Oh, you didn't catch it too. You, you are looking at the bill and say, wait a minute, where did this come from? God wants you to know in that moment that the enemy wants you to get frustrated so you can lose the focus of the cross. But while you are in the wilderness, God wants you to change your perception. Somebody say, I know. I know. A man who went on to change his name because he knows. 1996, they used to call me Willie. 1996, I had an encounter with God. And then all of a sudden, I became Joseph. And my sisters are saying to me, you are crazy. I said, I know. Because the truth is, faith is crazy. The reason some of you have not seen the manifestation of God's power is because you refuse to act based on what you believe. Aaron said, I believed. Because the prophet always talks about buying houses. In reality, he was waiting for the credit and the time to be right, but the spirit in him was saying, now he is.
Look at verse 3, please. For I decided that while, verse 3, verse 3. I came to you in weakness, timid, and trembling. Because Paul decided not to depend on the human strength, on the human wisdom, but on the power of God. So he had God's fear in him. It's not the spiritual weakness. It was the physical weakness because the man flesh gave up so that the man spirit in him can take over. Did you catch that? We have two personalities. Literally, we do. When they say some people are bipolar, we are one of, I am one of them. I have spirit man and I have flesh man. And sometimes, get rude, I have had to have a conversation with myself. I'm sorry, you guys, you don't know. Have you ever had a conversation with yourself? Have you ever looked in the mirror and said, I'm better than this? It was because the spirit is talking to the man. The man feels weak, but the spirit is saying, I am better than this. Elder Willie, every time I ever made the dumbest decision of my life, I didn't have to wait for people to tell me. My spirit was saying, you are better than this. You are wiser than this. You are smarter than this. So he says, I came in the weakness. The flesh was weak. But that doesn't mean he's weak. And that's the mistake people make. Is they look at the condition of your flesh and they judge you. They don't understand some of us are weak in the flesh. But we are the most dangerous people on earth. You guys are way too quiet. Let me. Because some people they want to see a cut man, six foot nine, who can bench press the entire world. No, some dangerous people are very small. Gentle voice. They don't have to yell or scream. Because their, their strength is not in their muscles. It is in their spirit. Am I helping somebody today? Verse number four, please. Ooh, I'm going to try to finish this tonight. And my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. That word power is called the dynamite, where we get the word dunamis. Dynamite. Because Paul understands if a human life is going to make that shift, there has to be something that is not from this earth. And this is what I want to say to everyone that came to celebrate the resurrection service. That without the Holy Spirit up to now, Jesus would be numbered among many religious leaders who are still held captive in their tombs. The world has nearly two billion Muslims. Nearly two billion Muslims spread across the world whose absolute faith is planted in a man who can still be found in a tomb. Because he had no power. Yet again, we have billions of people who have come to know and to trust in Jesus. We don't trust him, Anna, because we've seen him face to face. We don't trust him because he appears in our house every night and gives us messages. But we trust him because he has revealed himself to our spirit man in our hearts. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Jesus lives. We are convinced he lives. Because we have experienced his power. I, I want to be very real right now. And if this makes any sense, I want you to let, let me know. Dr. Tando, there are some of us 
who had given up trying to be free from addiction. Because we look at the patterns of addictions in our fathers and our siblings and our cousins and all of them, some of them died trying to break away. And there we were. All we had was a desire to be free. And we said, God help me. And when we said, God help me, it was the power, the dunamis power of Jesus that came to break that grip of addiction out of our life and people thought we were just having a moment but they don't understand that what was supposed to be a moment has become a lifestyle because we encounter Jesus that many of us many of us would have died had it not been for that dunamis power how many of you come on I'm, I'm, I'm speaking something Many of us, there, there are some of you, there are some of you in the worst of your sinful life. Some of you that used to drink like a fish, you are the life of the party. Many times you walk up at home, you don't, re, you don't remember how you drove for five hours, maybe 15 minutes. You don't rem all you remember is you woke up in the house, you were fully closed on your bed, you go out, your car is perfectly parked in the, in the runway. You don't understand that while you were high and driving, you were not the one driving. There was a power from heaven that came to take over because God had chosen you. God told the devil, you can't kill him. I know he's drunk. I know she's drunk. I know she's high. But I have chosen to reveal my power. A day is coming. In 2024, she will respond to my call. She will go to church. She will surrender her life. And I will use her to the glory of God. Many of you, many of you have disappointed many witches get rid these are witches who cursed others and their curse came to pass and there you are they cursed you and yet you are moving forward and they are witches they look at their witchcraft they're like it's working on others why is it because you have experienced the dunamis power When they heard you were applying for a visa to go to America, they cursed it, you still got the visa. When they heard you are getting married, they cursed it, you still got married. When they heard you are looking for a house, they cursed it, you still got a house. When they heard you are getting pregnant, they cursed it, you still got pregnant. You had a baby and it never worked because the power of God is over your life. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I feel the anointing right there. The herd, you were going to start a business and they stayed up for a whole week chanting and cursing your business. They cursed your business night and day. During the day, high at night, they are chanting over your pictures, chanting over everything that you are building. Today, I want you to know that Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall be raised against you, it shall not, it shall be condemned. Because there is the power of resurrection over your life. And don't you let the devil tell you, you don't even pray that much. Devil, you are a liar. I don't have to be a prayer warrior to experience the power of the resurrection. All I have to do is to believe that Jesus died on the cross. I feel such an anointing. Woo! Makebo Sayara Bandike. Get rid my prayer for your enemies is they don't die. Because if your enemies die now, they will go to their grave thinking their witchcraft over you came to pass. So I have prayed, God, let them live a long life. So they see you buy everything they thought you could never buy. You, you are not hearing me. Reese, this is for you. I pray that everybody who ever looked at you, he can never do that. My prayer is God never let them die. Let them live an old age. Let them see you rise from glory. 
to glory from one level to another level. Let them see you become stronger and stronger. Those who curse your health, let them see you live a healthy life. Tell your neighbor, there's a power working in me. Now, the way you say it, you sound doubtful. But, but I want you to understand, Pastor Stanley, that there are some of us, Amani, come here, I'll have to use Amani. Lay down on the stage, 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 lay down, lay down. Amani is asleep at night. Amani is asleep at night. Tabrisha, come. The Bible says God gives his beloved rest. Tell your neighbor, it's time to rest. No, the way you are saying it, it sounds doubtful. Tell your neighbor, it's time for my rest. So watch this now. The power that Paul is talking about is the power called the power of resurrection. While you rest at night, the power of the Holy Spirit is deployed from you to go into the future. To go and start working on your behalf. Stay with me. While you are resting, you think, Pastor Stanley, you are dreaming a house. You don't know. Your spirit is touring your house. Because there is a power that works in us. And when you wake up, wake up, Amani, wake up, Amani. When you wake up in the morning, you say, wait a minute. I had a dream. I had a bag of money. What you don't realize is your spirit, your spirit, your spirit. Get the bag, get the bag. Your spirit had gone into the hands, into the lives of the wicked and pick up the money from the hands of the wicked. It's now up to you to believe that a time is coming when what I have seen in my vision, it will come to pass. Tell your neighbor, keep dreaming, keep dreaming, keep dreaming, keep dreaming. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop dreaming. Be because there's a power in you that will reveal and manifest your dreams. Your, your amen is a little too weak. You, you have a desire to be married? Go to bed, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. A day is coming, you will dream you are getting married. The actual truth is your spirit had been into the future. Your spirit found you a spouse. While you are sleeping, your spirit is working. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I said, while you are sleeping, your spirit is working. Tell your neighbor, he never stop. He's always working. See, this is why, this is why those of us who are spiritual, who believe in the power, dunamis power, we are never depressed. Because we know that if only we can rest in the Lord, God is going to manifest. And he will give you the desires Tell your neighbor he's working. Now, it sounds like you are doubting. Come on, scream at them. He's working. Now, I want to prophesy. These are going to be prophecies. These are going to be prophecies. So those of you that are spiritual, it's time for you to get them. We are here right now. But Mother Gloria, do you know that our spirit have already stepped into the future? Our spirit have already comprehended the things that our eyes have not yet seen. Our spirit has already revealed the great things that God has in store for us. God knows to every single woman that there is a prince charming. He may not come on a horse, but he's coming in a Mercedes. Sorry, single people. To every divorced woman, I want you to know, yes, the divorce was painful. But God says, I'm about to bring you a Boaz. 
because of the power of the cross. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. There's a power that is at work in you. I said there's a power that is at work in you. I said there's a power that is at work in you. There's a power, there's a power, there's a power. When your mind can't understand, believe in the power that is at work in you. Know that a time is coming when you are going to walk into everything you ever prayed for. You will walk into everything you ever believed God for. You will walk down the aisle and get married. You will receive the keys to your house. You will start your own business. You will get healed and you don't have to do that operation. Come on, raise your hands. I want to prophesy over everybody. Today, I invoke the power that raised Jesus. Come on, shout a resounding amen. I invoke the power that raised Jesus. May that power come over you now. The power of the resurrection. May it break every curse. May it break every hold. May it break every bondage. May it break poverty. May it break every rejection. In the name of Jesus. Do you receive the prophetic word? If they ask you, what did you learn today? You tell them, I learned there's a power in me that works for me. That power works overnight to ensure I never die in the wilderness. That whether the devil likes it or not, I will march into the promised land. My children are coming with me. My spouse is coming with me. That it's time for me to live a healthy life. No more sickness, no more pain, no more affliction because the power is at work. If you believe God, raise your hands. Father, I have declared your word that the resurrection of Jesus is not a history occurrence, but it is a reality today that we encounter that power that raised him from the dead that transforms the life now let someone who needs that life giving spirit come on them now life giving spirit manifest in their finances that on this resurrection service let them encounter the resurrection power in their finances Spirit of God, I declare, don't stop until they become certified millionaires. Don't stop until that single woman who is praying to be married until she's married. That couple praying for the house. Spirit, don't stop until they close on the house. Don't stop until that person saying, God, I don't want to die from this condition. Until they are completely free. Don't stop until the power of that addiction is broken. That addiction to weed, addiction to pornography, addiction to drugs and alcohol, addiction to lies, addiction to every kind of stuff. I pray that spirit of the Lord, you will never stop. You will never give up until you bring them to the place of complete freedom. In Jesus name. Somebody say amen. I want to make an altar call. I want to make an altar call for those of you that, are, that need to repent of your sins. You want to ask the Lord to forgive your sins and you want to give your life to the Lord. Even if you did it a long time ago and you have backslidden, you've never lived for the Lord. I want to give you this opportunity to give your life to the Lord all over again. Backsliders, to rededicate your life to the Lord. 
And those of you that have been lukewarm, that you say, God, put me on fire for the Lord. Plant in me the strong desire to walk with the Lord. If this is your prayer, to rededicate your life to the Lord or to receive Jesus for the first time, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Thank you for those hands. Come on, somebody, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, congregation, I want all of you with your hands raised up. All of you repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you and against God. I have sinned in my body. I have sinned in my soul. I have sinned in my mind. Now I repent of all my sins. I ask you, wash me. Forgive me. Break the power of sin in Jesus' name. From today, I dedicate my body, my soul, my spirit, my mind to the Lord Jesus. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Devil, I renounce you. I resist you. I rebuke you out of my life. I belong to Jesus. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Now, now listen. I have to do this. I have to do this. We have a meal, by the way, after the service. Woo -woo. <laughs> and our hospitality team, they made a mistake. They started bringing food when I was coming to church, so I couldn't wait to finish the service. <laughs> I was like, that food smells good. But there are some of you that are saying, man of God, I want you to agree with me. I want you to lay your hands on me for the resurrection power. I want to believe God today some stuff are going to be resurrected. Is that okay? I want us to get our offerings out of the way. I want us to give our tithe. Now, some of you that are giving... You are going to give by faith, believing God for a financial resurrection. Whatever you're going to give, you are giving as a financial resurrection today. So make that offering be a special offering for the resurrection. If you need an envelope, ashes, run around, not run, but walk. I don't know why I keep saying run around. Ashes. Everybody who needs an envelope, the ushers are walking by. The information to give on the screen, please. What an anointing in the service. What an anointing in the service. If you have never been to church and you don't know how we give, the information is on your screen. If you are writing a check, make sure that you spell the words properly. So, Uncle Sam, we will not try to prophesy whether that's a million or a thousand Yes, I'm still waiting for that one person to give us that one million. <laughs> Thank you, Greg, for giving a million. Are you ready for to consecrate our offerings? All right. Now, someone said not yet. Well, I'll give you a minute. Um, the, the text is 84321. You can text it. Put the number in the, uh, in the text. Uh, that you are giving and then the cash up which is very easy you can also go to the website and you can give from there I want to consecrate it's a resurrection service some of you your businesses will be consecrated in this minute in this moment Natalie I don't believe the Holy Spirit should only give you tongues and give you righteousness only but he has to give you a complete life 
a complete life. That one, when you are set free from the powers of hell, your finances are set free too. Your health is set free too. Everything about you, your emotions, your mind, your family, set free. Somebody say amen. Are you ready to give? All right. Has, has, has everybody prepared? Because a minute ago I was told, wait a minute. So, again, the information is on the screen. You can text 84321. You will receive a, a, a link. Click on the link and put in your information. Those of you that are online, you can also partake. And I want to consecrate your offerings. I want to pray. And then I will have everybody that needs prayer to come forward. I want to lay my hands on you. I want to lay my hands on you. That, that lady in white that's next to you, is this your first time today? You've been here before. When? I'm sorry? You are Alice's sister. Hey, Alice. I just hear the Lord saying that um, your season of going in circles are over. And today ends the years of that frustration of trying to make things happen but things we are not happening the Lord says he's going to release you Dr. Lung if you don't mind uh, run over her and place your hands on her this, this is a birthing of something new something new God says you will not try to make anything happen anymore raise your hands Everything from marriage and relationships and careers, all of these things, you went all out and knocked on the doors and nothing worked. God says, but there's a spirit God is putting in you, a spirit of the resurrection that is going to bring you to the place of fruitfulness. So I release you from frustration. I release that frustration off of you in the name of Jesus. I declare by the Holy Spirit, there we go. Receive the rest. It's time. It's time. You've tried it all. It hasn't worked. God says it's time now. It's time now. The Lord says I'm also healing you from like an experience with disappointment in your heart. So be healed. The Spirit of God is moving. You don't hold back. Just let it move. Let it move. He's not done. He's not done. And the lady behind Rebecca, in my, my colors are off the chain. Uh, I went to Richland College. So my colors are not very good. But is that is that purple behind you? The, uh, uh, Rebecca behind you, the lady. That's purple. All right. Is that your first time, Mama? You've been here since January. You've been here since January. Okay. All right. So let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Minister Sylvia, please, if you can go and place your hand on her. The Lord says the dry sea, the dry, the desert where you've been. God says, I'm commanding rivers to flow. Place your hand on her belly and lady, lift your hands. Lift your hands, yes. There we go. God says, you've been dealing with dryness. I will release you. The dry season where you've been. The Lord says, I'm also commanding healing in your house. Because of the season where it where you guys have been, it began to strain your relationship. Because you look at things that you plan, they don't work. And now it's straining your relationship between you and this person that I'm seeing. I don't know if this is your husband or your it's it's straining. Is that is this correct that I'm hearing? I'm sorry? Yeah, it's my husband. Yes. I see a strain because you got both of you guys are in a dry season and it's putting pressure on both of you. Yes. Right. Because 
what you had planned did not come to pass. The Lord says, today I'm causing rivers to flow where you are. Amen. Rivers. The Lord says, I'm healing the relationship. Amen. I'm healing the house. Amen. And I'm, I'm healing the field where both of you, I think both of you had planted some kind of a field uh, that has almost died. But God says, I'm going to breathe life into that field. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, if you are ready, raise your offering. Raise your offering. Raise your offering. Mm. I heard in the spirit about a scheme. The scheme was to stop him from ministry. To stop him from ministry. So first attempt was to kill him. Second attempt did not work. Third attempt, they said, okay, then we have to break his body so he can't minister. Who is he? That's your husband. That's your husband. The Lord says the anointing that was placed on him is irrevocable. Irrevocable. What has changed is the seasons because of the attempts on your life. That's your brother. Yes. That's your older brother. So, what I'm hearing is a scheme that was set out to kill you. One, two, three. Couldn't work. So then, let's break him. Because there's an anointing on your life to preach. Now remember, it's irrevocable. It's irrevocable. If today you surrender, God says the master plan the master plan will be deployed over your life. The master plan will be deployed over your life. And God says, almost a 26-year vagabond wandering from place to place could not settle. God says today, it will break and you will live in one place. One place. You will no longer be moving, trying to find where you rest. God says today, after nearly 26 years, today, I will settle you in one place where you will live in peace for the rest of your life in one place. Today. If you surrender, today. That's the reason the Lord brought you here today. If you surrender, today. You have been resisting for a long time. For a long time you've been resisting. But God says it's time for you, you surrender to his plan, master plan. The Lord says he has proven to you that he is real, he is alive. He has proven to you that you are different. You are different. Your old man did not hearken to the will of God, to the plan of the Lord. All of you guys could see your father had a calling on his life, but he refused. That call was placed, placed onto you. If you don't, if you don't, you will continue moving from place to place, chasing what should be chasing you. Did you hear that? Chasing what should be chasing you. God says today, if you hearken, you surrender. In five weeks, things you've been pursuing for 26 years in five weeks will start pursuing you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus.
Now, listen. Listen to the master plan. Listen. He thought he came to visit. But the Lord says, welcome home. This is the city where God is bringing you. Where you will be planted like a tree on the riverside. Whose roots shall run deep down. You will not be worried when the dry season comes. God says, and you shall prosper and produce in and out of season. So, I see both of you. A day is coming, God will relocate you. You will no longer call this place a visit for vacation. But God will plant you in this place. I see a house already has been opened. I see the city between the Curtain and the Richardson and Plano area. God says, I have opened up the realm of the spirit. It will now chase you. Are you ready to surrender yourself to the Lord? Are you ready to surrender? Stand here, face me. And bring, bring his wife here. Bring his wife here. Bring his wife here. Dr. Lungi, please visit me. Dr. Dr. Lungi, join me. Join me. This woman here has an apostolic anointing that was... I'm sorry? This is my spiritual daughter and my spiritual son. An apostolic anointing that was never activated. I lay my hands on you. Yes, you have walked with God, but there was a limit on your life. You could not go beyond that limit. Tonight, as a man anointed by God from my mother's womb, I break that limit, that curse. And the Lord says, I release you now to operate in your gift and in the plan. I lay my hands on you. I release your heart, your physical heart. I release your physical mind. I release your spine and your nerve system. The devil that tried to kill you. The spirit of witchcraft. I break it off of you now in the name of Jesus. I declare now you are a servant of the Lord. You will serve God. Be free now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be free. In Jesus' name. Can we bless the Lord today? church that does deliverance and prophecy during tithing. My father, we bring our offerings before you. I pray now that you will breathe your life, the resurrection life, on every offering and every tithe. Let every giver today experience the resurrection power of Christ. I pray that sickness no longer operate in their family. I pray that disease no longer operates in their family. In Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. I know we are under the anointing, but let's do the decree. Yes, sir. Decree. Let's do the decree. Raise your offering on three. One, two, three. This is my seed sown on good ground. I expect supernatural doors to open and pour out many blessings over my life. So much so that there will not be enough room to contain it. I receive financial breakthrough. I lack nothing good all the rest of my days. I live in plenty. As for me and my house, poverty is broken. 
I decree and declare that money is subject to me. I am blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Now, I have a question. Ashes collect the offering. Dr. Tando, I know I pray, I said I was going to pray for every, I'm looking at time, and some of you are telling me, uh, get to this telling it's time to eat. Yes, okay. So I'm going to pray for everyone tonight. So those of you that need, if you desperately, you need, not desperately, but if you need prayer, I want you to come tonight. I will continue with the master plan part two series. And I'm going to go real deep. I'm going to go deep, 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 deep into the realms of the spirit. Guys, God bless you. Uncle Sam, did you want to give people direction? Blessings. Uh, we're going to do it by rows. This row here will be the first. Follow Aaron's leading up front here. And then this will be the second row, etc., etc. So please stay in your seats and be guided by the ushers. Thank you. So next week, those of you sitting here should be sitting that side. <laughs> Your name.